Welcome to the highlight show for week nine of Ultimate Pool, the Masters. Dom Cooney is the only Ultimate Pool pro in the group and he will start as favourite. He plays in our second match against Jarrah Griffiths. Our opening game sees Matt Cook taking on Tom Taylor. The opening two frames were shared and we join him at the start of frame three. Already this year alone on the Ultimate Pool table. But for how good his first break was, that one wasn't as good. And Tom Taylor's going to get first visit in this frame. Well, Tom Taylor comes in as the sort of rank outsider in this week's Ultimate Pool Masters. Saw his record there in his bio. And just get the sense that he's free rolling a little bit here. Oh, he needed to make that one, though. That was a great chance to make it 2-1 and really keep Matt Cook in his chair thinking about the mistakes that he's made, but that's a let off. It wasn't as if it was even too difficult a pot either. I'll be really annoyed with that one because yellows are still nice. Yeah, he should have got that one really. He won't be happy with that. But it's gone and he's got to put it to the back of his mind as soon as he possibly can. Long way to go. And we've already seen a couple of mistakes from Matt. So, you know, it's not like um, Tom's been sat in his chair in these first two frames he's, he's had chances uh, and you know form says in the first two frames he will continue to get chances that's a bit more like it from Matt Cook that's what he's trying to play in the last frame question for me here Jimmy is when does he go up and take that yellow at the top of the table yeah, I think he's got to do it quite soon. Um, I think there, he, I mean, he had an opportunity to do it there. Um, because now sort of what he's left himself is, unless he sort of clears the reds out the way, he, he's sort of going away from his work a little bit. I think he, he maybe could have took the one at the top of the table there and screwed back to roughly where he was. And Yeah, because that yellow just by the triangle line can become a little bit awkward for him. It does go to this... Bottom right, but well, it just goes to the bottom left if he can land. I don't think he has there. I think it might be the case that he just a little soft dink with this one into the middle and leave himself between the eight ball and the red on the one down the bit. Yeah, that's exactly what he's played. So it's a natural angle now, a little bit of left hand side just to come sort of round the angles here. There's a bit of traffic up the table. He just needs to be careful of what he's doing. Yeah, and if you flip that around, there's a bit of traffic down the table as well. You see, that's, I don't think that's the best shot he's ever played. I think if, if I was going to do that, I think I'd either left the cue ball right on the right-hand side rail because then he can clip the yellow thin on the left and, and bring the white over to, you know, around the angles. Whereas there, I think he's a little bit straight. It, it certainly looks like it from this camera angle. But yeah, he wants to be on this right side of the table, doesn't he, for the eight ball? Oh, big trouble. Oh, has I think got, has he just OK. No, he isn't. He's covered it. You see, the shot he played before, if he swings that cue ball around the table... Well, it, it was just what I was saying, actually. He has you know, a natural he, angle to, to stun down and, and leave yeah. himself a big, big space. He said those reds were a big sort of blocker going up the table, but they're an even bigger blocker trying to get on the eight ball. Oh, this would be some shot. Gets the hit, so it doesn't concede the foul. But well, Tom Taylor, these are all in the open. Here's your chance. And it's time now to turn the screw. What did you make of the Pairs Cup the other night? Oh, I mean, it was brilliant, wasn't it? What an atmosphere we had as well, didn't it? I, th I think that was the biggest thing, you know, because obviously we've had... Um, it's not to say that it's it's old hat, but you know we've. Ooh, we'll come back to that in a second. Ooh. What do you do here, Tom? It's unforgivable to play a shot like that. Such a big space to land in. Touching ball helps him. I'm not sure what he's played there. Foul. Wait, mate, he can't have been touching ball. 
he wasn't touching ball. The question is, what has he tried to do? I think um, I think I'd like to be a little mic in his ear now, saying, "What, what was what was that? What did you try to do there? Talk, <laughs> talk me through that." Matt Cook won the next as well in a very similar way. Uh, Liam White. Um, I mean, it's an okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Team that. You know, it was okay. You know, it was more just to get out the house on a Friday away from the missus. It really <laughs> was. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, some some team. Very privileged to have, have played with, and still play with 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 all of them people and good friends and great pool players. So. Oh, Tom Taylor straight brought the boat out for that first shot. I'm not sure he's thinking 100% straight at the moment. I think he's just maybe showing a little bit of desperation. Yeah, it's it's easy to sort of sit on the sidelines, be a bit critical, but I mean, you know it as as well as anybody, Jimmy. When it when it goes against you in that arena, it can be a very very difficult place to be. Oh, it can, yeah. Everything is so so um, magnified as well under the lights and you know the um, millions of people watching. Jamo, it's uh, you know you, you sort of you can play on your mind, I guess. You know it, what's people thinking and not is my girlfriend watching this and what do my parents think and it, it, that can all go through your mind. Trust me, it can. You know I've invited my mates down and I'm playing like this and what do they think and it, yeah, I mean especially for someone who's you know, the first time in the arena. Um, yeah, he's a young lad as well, only 23 years of age. It's very, this is all very, very new. Now, Matt's key shot here is obviously going to be to get onto the eight ball. He's got a couple of nice balls to be able to do it. Just about executing now for the big man. Yeah, he's got a big space to, to be able to get onto the eight ball, though. Big sort of triangle of reds there around the eight ball, but there's a there's certainly no space there to not have to panic. But that's not the best shot. He's okay. Thought he was going to come up, pull up a little bit there, but he's okay. If he just drops this in, and then you'll find he's playing his, his last yellow with a little bit of left hand side, just to take the cue ball up towards that that right hand rail. So you see, he's putting left hand side on the cue ball there just to you see the spin on the cue ball so it just stops the white now he's gonna have to play this with a little bit more left hand side than than what he wanted um yeah he's got a lot of angle so he, yeah but he's the got, table the table can do a lot of the work for you yeah he's got a big target here he's pulled out of it i can't believe he's short he pulled out of it completely didn't hit it well at all just jabbed at it Scared to lose the cue ball, which again is, is something that's quite common on this table, given how fast it is. Yeah, it's a sign of a bit of a lack of confidence as well, which is understandable given the way the first four frames are gone. But Matt Cook's going to play a shot again here. It's still makeable, but it's going to need to be a good one. Not to be. But we, we almost take it for granted at this stage the... I mean, the amount of eight ball that we get to see with Ultimate Pool is brilliant. But, you know, we watch it a lot more than these players play on these conditions, if that makes sense. And we should always give every player their, their fair shout of how unique these conditions are to the ones they'll be used to. And if you're not confident and you're not, you know, playing the shots properly and decelerating a little bit, there is no hiding place whatsoever. Tom Taylor nice. needs a plan for this red near the eight ball. He's having a go at these. I didn't think he'd be having a go at these. I'm not sure of the plan. Yeah, it's aggressive. I'm gonna screw this in. <laughs> screw into the red. Incredible. Oh. I mean, what, what a shot, shot that is. <laughs> what a shot that is. Come on, Tom. I really want to see him get this because what a finish this would be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is the finish I of the night. I tell you what. That's it. Give him the trophy. 
fair play, Tom Taylor. You've made two poor commentators like mugs there. That's brilliant. <laughs> What's the plan? What's he doing? Super Don't worry, Tom Taylor had the answer. <laughs> what a positional what? shot he's played there. What do we know? Matt Cook won the next frame to go two in front once again. Liam, I'll retire after we win the Pairs Cup. How about that? Yeah, that seems like a fair enough deal. Go on a high. Which is more than you could ever say for Liam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liam never goes out on a high. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Liam. You sent me that message in good faith. I'm doing a bit dirty there. Anyway, Matt Cook's had a great start to this frame. It's a good break, and he's got a great chance here. He does need to settle in this match, Matt Cook. Ball two up, but it's been a bit of a shadow of a performance from him, really. Yeah, I mean, like you say, I mean, this, this result could be either way. Um, you know, matters has given away a few more than enough chances for, for Tom to be ahead, so he is due to sort of just take a nice, straightforward finish out and, and s still settle himself because, you know, two or three of these frames, he, he's made mistakes. I mean, these really are sitting. And I must apologise, uh, Steve, as well, because earlier on on, on my Twitter, I, I commented and said that I was in the comms box tonight with Sai. Yeah, you've I, got the yeah, uh, you got the backup instead. I got the uh, I got the message from uh, from Will um, at Ultimate Pool to say you're, you're in with Jamo. I was like, oh, thanks for telling me. Yeah, you'd have dressed up if you knew it's me, eh? That's it. I'd have made more of an effort. Yeah. <laughs> Simple enough. I don't know if this was always the plan for Matt Cook to take him that way, but he's still okay. Should be okay here. I think he can just maybe screw. Can he screw behind the other? Has he got a little bit of angle? Yeah, he's not dead straight. He's got, yeah, seems all right to me. Nope, that's oh. a bad shot. Oh, no. That's a big, big area to land in. That is such a bad shot. He's scratching his head again. I don't think that eight ball passes the yellow into the middle either. I think he's got to go up to the top left. Close. That's a great effort. Oh, what a shot, what a shot that is. What a recovery. Lovely shot. Matt Cook won the next two frames to go one away from victory. There's definitely enough time in the match. Yeah, just about. Are you going to have first poke? He took loads off that break. He's gone for a bit of a hard stun. I think we were talking about this before the show. I know it might be the bit of the MO on this table. You don't need to do a huge amount. And do you know what? Providing he knocks this one in the middle. Oh, no, he's going for yellows. That's incredible. That's an incredible decision. If, if he'd have rolled that red in the middle that's closest to the yellow, to the left-hand side of the eight ball there, they haven't actually landed too bad. Yeah, they're away. But he's taken on the most difficult suit, and he's now left Matt with, you know, a, a really good frame, a match-winning opportunity. Yeah, with the reds, it's one of those where they look a lot more awkward than they actually are. He hasn't played the best shot in the world there, but he's still OK. Still goes to the top right-hand pocket as we look at the table. Nice shot. Yes. Now should be the time, really, for, for Matt Cook. To get the job done, get it won, and he's drawing up. And also, with the greatest respect, he, he just wants to forget about this game once it's once it's done and won. Get it done, get it in the books, and then 
not think about it for the next hour while you wait for your, your group final. Yeah, it's just time to reset. You know, you've, you've, you've got the job done. You've, you've won the match. OK, it's not been the, um, the tidiest of performances, but... Oh, he's capable no so much more, yeah. No one remembers how. No. Remember who? Just a simple sort of stun shot here, or even if he just drags it and takes the pace out, he's perfect. Stuns it in, he's actually screwed back an inch or two there. Yeah, that's the pace of the table for you. It's actually very, very difficult to stop the cue ball dead. It really <laughs> is, yeah. Doubles it just because of that, but oh. doesn't finish with a flourish. Just slid on him a fraction. And Tom Taylor... Tom hasn't got time to hang around. He needs to sort of... Oh, he's a quick player. That'll help him. But he needs to dispatch these quickly. Don't think, just do almost a little bit. Oh, that will do it. Fourth time in the match, Matt Cook comes to the table and rolls in a simple eight ball. What could have been then for Tom Taylor as Matt Cook takes the victory in our first match of the night in the Ultimate Pool Masters? And he will face the winner of our second match still to come. Dom Cooney against Jared Griffiths. It's Dom on the opening break. Oh, we saw something like in the first match, Jimmy. He's absolutely how it's at those. Yeah, he's, he's not got a bad break, Dom. He's a good player. Extremely lucky. <laughs> this is the best part of Team Blessed. They're not called Team Blessed for nothing. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that he's... Uh, I asked him tonight how he'd been playing. He said, no, not too bad. He says, providing I keep getting the flukes, I'll be all right. <laughs> so he even acknowledges it himself. But he is certainly more than capable. Yeah, he's a great player, is Dom. Great lad as well. Yeah, he's a nice lad. Oh, that's a top that's shot. A Wasn't an easy opener, and he's he's rolled that one in, cued it nice. And I'm sure the uh, the other half of Team Blast will be watching on tonight, Luke Gilbert. Practice partner, an all-round good egg. He is, yeah. I saw the uh, the battle that they had midweek on. Oh, the old battle lines. Yeah, the battle yeah, lines, yeah. Great, saw, I saw, saw Luke absolutely hammered Dom. Yeah, I saw, <laughs> saw that. <laughs> I, will, I will give you a little, a little inside scoop here, Jimmy, and all of our Ultimate Ball TV subscribers. We filmed one of those on Monday with one Mark Selby and Gareth Potts, and it is brilliant. Yeah, I can imagine. You, t you know those two very, very well. You can imagine how competitive it got very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sort of there filming for the first couple, and and it's it's not supposed to be taken seriously. It's a bit of fun just to have a bit of a laugh and a bit of needle with each other. And we're getting all sorts of questions on rules and regs. <laughs> well, if you've done that for him, why have I not? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Yeah, two two absolutely brilliant characters. Well, very quickly, for two men who were very, very close to 40, they both transformed into two 12-year-olds needling each other around the table. That's what being brothers-in-laws is all about, though, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Shot dump. Although he might... Is he... Is he on the right angle for this? I'm not sure he is. He's yeah. got to play another one here. Yeah, I think he's a little bit straight. So he's, I mean, that's where he wants to land, where he's looking there. But he's got to sort of top this through. He might even chop it to the middle. He might have no choice. Yeah, he's got two. This is an easy shot. This is tough. Oh, that'll do. Team blessed in action. There you go, see. Off the second jaw. <laughs> Honest, don't. Some of the things he's done against me. I was going to say, have you, have you ran a foul of, uh, of Dom? I have. I have a couple of times. I think. I think I've got the upper hand at the minute. Like the last match that we had, 
he wasn't too pleased. I think I was I was losing by quite a bit, and the 15 second shot clock kicked in, and I was running around like a madman and managed to get three or four finishes. And he was I, I won the match. I and he remember was, that, yeah. He wasn't happy. Well, this has been a really nice out from Dom Cooney if he can apply the finishing touch here. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Really, really good from Dom Cooney, that. Dom Cooney won the next three frames as well to race into a 4-0 lead. It certainly is. But he can't really reflect. No, of course. It, but, that, but that's the challenge, isn't it? I think more and more sort of pro players are, are sort of starting to, to get used to that a little bit, aren't they? You know, with Ultimate Pool, there is so much talent out there that sometimes every player will be forced to sit in that chair and have no chance to win the game. Yeah. I think that's becoming more and more sort of an accepted almost viewpoint, really, which was difficult at first. But for the, for the challenges, like Jared, it's a little bit more difficult because they'll be used to having a few more chances in games a bit more regularly. Jared's got his chance here, though. Cooney scratches off the break. And is this Jared's moment to get his first frame on the board? It's a little bit too early to say it needs to be, but he certainly wouldn't mind. A little bit of good fortune there, but it's all part and parcel of the game. Can't help but thinking that he needs to, he definitely needs to take these out. That's nice. Yeah, could just hold it as well, which helps him a lot. Should be there now for Jared. Space to land in here. Biela goes comfortably. Just doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want to leave too much angle on the yellow. Yeah, nothing for short here. Yeah, because you know, he's, he's got to go into the eight ball. So, ideally, he wants to land straight here. Straight would be perfect. Is it to slow up just a little bit? Yeah, that's fine. I think a, a sort of little. Almost like a soft screw here. Oh, I like that actually. Yeah, it's a nice shot that. Yeah, really nice. I think that the reason I said the soft screw is obviously it just, just knocks the eight ball away from the cue ball. Whereas there, if he gets a little bit of heavy contact, he could have left himself right next to the eight ball, but he, he played it perfectly and he's got his first frame on the board and he'll, he'll feel a lot more comfortable now, for sure, competing at, at the snooker against him. And um, I dropped him a text last week saying, great to see you come over and looking forward to, to sort of seeing him. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously he's achieved such, such a lot with the snooker. We've got a big name. Um, you know, great for our sport to see him sort of come over. And I think it's a, you know, with how, how well the sport is doing and, and the game is getting bigger and bigger through Ultimate Pool, I think it's a, a, you know, another great platform for a lot of snooker players. They maybe want to try a little bit of something different. And why not? You know, it, it, you know obviously he's, he's already got a huge profile mark, but it, it raises it even more. Yeah, it certainly does. And well, anything else, I mean, it's... It's enjoyable, isn't it? It, it? It's something different. It's very, very different to the snooker, of course. He's a fast-paced player as well, Mark. He always has been, so it should be exciting. Should see a few fireworks, especially with that group as well. Obviously, we've got you know a, a mix of abilities in that, in that group, you know, and, and all of a very high ability as well. Obviously, we've got Ronan, who is without a shadow of a doubt. You know, Ireland's best ever tap dancer. 
<laughs> um, and, and you know, that's <laughs> it's great to see people from different sports coming over and trying their hand at pool, especially Ronan, the uh, all Irish dancing champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will, uh, he'll be tuning in tonight and uh, he'll, he'll be having a good giggle. But yeah, I mean, Ronan's a we all know he's a legend of, of this sport, certainly money match wise, he's won many you know, pro events, but money match wise, without a shadow of a doubt, the best money player our game's ever seen. And, it is age to still be even competing, you know, it's any other sport you, you, you wouldn't be, but it's phenomenal, really. And then you've also got Mick, who's, you know, the, the player of the season so far, you would say. Um, oh, I don't without, think anyone can argue with question. that. Yeah. Um, what, what, what a group. And, and, and don't be surprised next week if you see a shock, you know. Dylan isn't there to make the numbers up, neither is Emma. You know, they're, they're there to win. And we've seen time and time again what these players are capable of so yeah and we've seen so far in the players championship as well pretty high propensity of six red shootouts and if we can I dare say if we can see Mark Allen in a six red shootout a fair few of his snooker buddies would absolutely love to watch that yeah absolutely right I mean let's have a look at our, our world record holder and our current fastest six red shootout is Brian Alcrow I mean you know, Brian, I, I love Brian, he's a great guy. Should, should Good player. To Brian but, on the buzzer, Halker, now. Well, well, I'm sure that Brian would be the first person to say I'd never expected myself to be top of that ranking list. And no. the one that he did was just phenomenal. So you know good. I mean? Wow. Y y you'd have genuinely, I think, well, Donkey's back there, the combination shot. Let's give this a second. It's again, it's lost, know, a turn. It's lost a turn. He's 4 1 up. He's played the percentage again. I mean, it's. I don't think it's great because Jared can play one back here. I don't think he quite wanted it to be a dead set plant. Yeah, I think that's why Dom just stro stroked his head a little bit there. Having said that, even if Jared's got to be a little bit careful, I think he w if he can play that, he'd love to leave the cue ball behind the red just to avoid leaving Dom a long one. He's not got a lot of time to think about it. Well, that's a strange shot. I mean, the only thing I can think of there. Is that uh, maybe a little bit of, just a bit of brain freeze, maybe not thinking in international rules first, maybe? Maybe, but he's had a little bit of a result because the cue ball's landed close to the cushion, so he can't really do a lot with the cue ball. And he's covered that yellow as we look to the bottom right-hand pocket. It's so not It's not a bad shot. Yeah, he's, a, he's actually had a little bit of a, of a result there. It's not as bad as what you first thought. And this, I mean, look at this. Wow. What a shot, Dom. Oh, wow. What a shot he's just played there. Highlight real shot number two, that one for sure. I mean, the spin on that. Have another watch. One, two... That's an amazing shot. Like a little banana shot, wasn't it? Oh, I think it's a double banana. Double banana. Doesn't back oh. it up. Eight oh. balls in. Wow. Wow. Well, oh, he's that's smiling. that team blessed. I mean, he's smiling, so, I mean, <laughs> OK, he's, he's, he's not going to let it bother him too much, but <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a smile that tells me he's very bothered. No, I think he. I think that's incredible. But wow. The next two frames were shared. Dom has the break in frame nine. You know, in sort of a bit of a big tournament that really for Josh Cork. It's almost the this was the first chance he's got just to join the pros and say, "All right, this is what we're made of." I tell you what, if he breaks half as well as this one here, he'll go all right. Wow, look at that. Because Tom Cooney has absolutely battered them. I mean, these uh, these have to be all there. You can take either suit here if you want. He's going to take reds. But it's such a good break that you could really just fairly comfortably, I think, knock in either. This is a fantastic chance for Dom Cooney just to reassert his dominance in this match. Yeah, he needed that break there, really, because Jared's still sort of clipping at his heels. And this sort of thing can sort of knock the, the, the wind out of Jared's sails a little bit, really, because you know, he's not actually played too bad. He's not done a no. lot wrong, and and he's, he's 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 staying there. He's staying with him. But then every you know, other frame, Dom's getting a, a little finish like this. It's just just enough to to win you the match. Played a nice shot there. Though he might just be slightly the wrong side of straight, the wrong way. 
think he wanted to be a little bit close to that corner pocket so he could just naturally come out for the eight ball. Might have to put a little bit of action on this cue ball. I think he'll just soft run it and play the, play the eight ball to Into the middle. To the middle, yeah. He can screw it back and try to force something, but does he really need to? Okay, this is a little bit more of a difficult shot, but you would certainly fancy him gaining. Yeah, it's one of those take your medicine sorts of shots. So, 14 minutes left. This to go 6-3 for Dom Cooney. Never in doubt. Yeah, lovely finish. Dom won the next frame to go one away from victory. Gerard did pull one back and we join him breaking off in frame 12. To force six red shoots out or the next four to go and win it outright. And he's going to get first go. I tell you what, these have come out nice. Skates on Jared Ladd. This is a great chance. What a chance this is. Yeah, got to get a move on here, but he broke them perfectly straight up and down the middle of the table. It's got to be yellows, right? Yeah, I would say so. The only one that's kind of a problem is the one close to the eight ball. But as long as he gets the one out the way, the other one at the bottom of the table out the way, it goes in the bottom right. Well, he has got balls over that side of the table as well, and it's a big gap. You know, it's, it's, it's enough in the middle of the table to not have to worry too much. Not sure about this shot. It's not the best shot he's ever played. Oh, that nice. at him beautifully though. This is now a big chance. You'd have loved to have been a little bit further up the table. I'm not sure about this path. It's not the way I'd have gone, but we all see it differently. Yeah, he's played that nice. He can now go right in behind it and play it to the top. He can come round it and play it to the bottom right. He's got options here. Yeah, he needs to get through it. Oh, he doesn't want to go into it. I don't... I can't oh. believe he's tried to play that shot. He's got such a big space to land in for different options and he's just left himself under a, a mountain of pressure here to pot this now. This is tough. Horrible queuing as well. Oh, he's got it. Off the red. Oh, well, I thought he'd had a stroke of luck there. That might be that. It should be. Two minutes, 46 left. That should be that for Jared Griffiths. It had to go. And even then, it might not have been enough. Just with the clock. Yeah, I mean, Dom's just got to pot a few balls in and waste the time. Yeah, he's a good That's exactly player, what he's doing. Says. I think he knows exactly what he's doing. He's just taking his time. Yeah, you'll hear the beeps on every shot here from Don Cooney. Only it will be very deliberate. <laughs> he just keeps glancing up at the clock there, Luke, just to make sure. It's an interesting sort of thing with the beeps. I was chatting to Dave McNamara a little while ago after his, uh, his run to the Pro Series final where he's beaten by Carl Sutton and he's telling me about the the match he had against Craig Waddingham in the semi-final when he's obviously made that, that big shot down the rail towards the end of the match and it felt like he was queuing it forever and you're thinking, oh my goodness, is, 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 he, is he bottling this? What, what's going on? And I, I, I said that to him, and I said, what, what was the crack? He said, well, I just got down on it. And my strategy is on the 15 second shot clock is you get down on the shot and you wait for the beeps and then you can almost, you don't have the element of surprise coming. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you're down on the shot and you haven't heard them, you don't want the beep to go off just on your backswing and maybe throw you off. You wanted that almost insurance policy. Ooh. Is he a little bit straight on this? I mean... He's got the clock in his favour, so that's okay. There's certainly not enough time now for Jared, even if he won this frame. Yeah, he needed a couple of golden breaks, I think. Unless he got a golden break. Dom Cooney cuts it in anyway. It's 8-4, the win for Dom Cooney. Gets it done within the allotted time. 
in the group final, Dom Cooney and Matt Cook for a place in the next stage. Tell you what, Dominic. What a break he's hit there. And I think he's actually not really been rewarded with a very nice split at all. Stephen Jamieson and Jimmy Croxton with you on the comms. Still for this one. And for as well as he's hit that break, I think he's been left a little bit horrible here. Yeah, they're nasty. <laughs> yeah. Might be a bit of mileage in this first frame, you know. That's a nice shot. That's a really nice shot. Tough pot now. Not not particularly easy dropping this into the middle, but if he gets it, the finish is there. I can only assume he's comfortable with this eight ball in the bottom corner pocket. Looks a little bit tight, but he's must be comfortable enough with it. That's a nice pot. He's cued that well. That was harder than it looked. So still a bit of work to do for Don Cooney in this finish. Maybe that was the plan all along. Yeah, I think it was, but I think the eight ball still goes. I'm not sure if he's left anything particularly easy. But I think the eight ball still goes in the bottom right hand pocket. From the overhead, it looks really tight from the normal angle. Looks like a huge bag. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Welcome to the world of commentators. It's not easy to tell. Matt will know. I think that shot tells us it might not be plain sailing. Yeah, percentage pull there from Matt. It's a good shot as well. Not left on much at all here. Dom started the match against Jared Griffiths. Brilliantly played really well in the opening sort of four or five frames. Was superb. He's enough. And for about the third time tonight, in off he goes. But has he covered the eight ball with that shot? I think he has, you know. It's maybe not the worst result, which is incredible to think. I'm going to try and move it off the cushion here. Oh, he did. Oh, oh. oh I don't believe that. Oh, oh wow. wow. I mean, that's astonishing. That is absolutely amazing. How's your luck? <laughs> I mean, that's... You just couldn't predict that, could you? That's disgusting. I mean, he didn't play the greatest shot in the world with with regards to, you know, the shot that he intended. However... You don't deserve to be punished like that, though. No, absolutely not. Goodness me. Yeah, just amazing, really. That'll be on the highlight reel for all the wrong reasons, but uh, I'm sure it'll be on there. It's quite unbelievable what's happened there. Great break. Oh. How <laughs> oh, about it? Someone's got to keep Matt Cook in the arena because if I was in right now, I'd be starting the car. Unbelievable that again. Wow. I mean, to get that back to facts. <laughs> Sometimes you ever feel as a player like the writing's on the wall. Yeah, when you're playing Dom, especially. <laughs> I'm going to get him to pick me lottery numbers before he gets back in the car this evening. I am. <laughs> it's just got that sort of feel to the night.
just can't quite believe. I'm still not over what happened at the end of that first frame. <laughs> just unbelievable that. And for Matt Cookie, they've been really looking forward to this, to this match, group final. But of course, a real chance to to reset because he didn't play well at all in that first match against Tom Taylor. Won it, yes, that's the most important thing. But he didn't play well. Didn't play the level he can play because he's a quality player, is Matt. Just dropped through here and leaving himself low. Just a natural angle to run up the table for the eight ball. If he's if he's straight on this, he's okay. We see he's looking there where he can finish. He's not straight, so change of plan. He's okay. Yeah, he should still be fine. A couple of options available to him here. Depending on what he fancies. And that seems to be the best option. Landed perfect for the right middle. And Dom Cooney goes 2 0 in front. A break clearance and reverse clearance from Dom Cooney made it 4-0 as we go into frame 5. No, hang on a minute. What am I saying here? No, that's, yeah. that's wrong. No, but, you know, he, he can start having a little bit of bad luck and Mac is more than capable of rattling four frames off just as quick. So, let's see what happens. Not a last ball rolling, was it? <laughs> Close to. He hit those well, to be fair, did Dom. And if he can get a ball here, these are these have come out really nice. Looking at yellows, I think. I don't think he's got an opening red. I think he can he can play the red to the middle. But he's not taking it, he's taking yellows. Yeah, I think you're right, I think he is on that red to the middle, but it is yellows for Don Cooney. So his big problem ball. It's the one at the top of the table. He's looking at it right now. Yeah, he's just going to take play it now. If he plays it with a little trace of right hand side, he can actually play the turnover shot, spin the cue ball off the off the rail, and just drop in behind the yellow and leave Matt absolutely nothing on. He's looking there as to where he wants to leave both cue ball and object ball. And his goal here is to leave it as horrible as possible. Well, he hasn't quite done that. He's not left a super easy finish. He had a little bit of insurance there, Dom, if it didn't quite go right, that Matt has got a horrible red on the table. But other than that, he's got a sniff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an easy one. I mean, it's no. I mean, how typical is it that when you finally come to the table, you're presented with this? But it's better than nothing. It's more that he could go in off here. Pass this to the middle. Oh, that's a good shot. He's actually played that really nice. So that red on the side of the table, Jimmy, how are you solving it? It's a tough one. <laughs> I think what you've got to do maybe is, is maybe land behind it and trust your queue and play it up the rail. You know, so take out take out your one in the middle here, and play the top one. Yeah, play the top one. I mean, you could try to get it out here, but the, has he got a little bit too much angle? You have to check it a little bit. But I would be playing the top one here, and then the one it behind it off the bottom. Yeah, absolutely right. And then then the one sort of on no, he's the black the spot almost he's getting the other way. So he's checking he's this a little bit. Bust it out here, yeah. This isn't an easy shot. He's got a lot of angle on this. See. Miles away. I was always going to be the risk, and he's now put himself in a world of trouble. He was a long way off that, you know. And yeah, Matt Cook is in all kinds of trouble here. Yeah, because he can't even leave. He can't even land safe. I don't here. know, it's a safe spot on the table, really. It's a good hit. Oh, hello. Yeah. But Tom Cooney here. Comes back to the table with a great chance to clean up. 
knowing how sort of Dom plays, I don't think he'll be taking Nathan Silly on here. He doesn't need to. Yeah, he's, he's got a couple of balls that he'd love to be better, namely on the right side of the table as we look. And in Dom's case, if Matt was to move that red for him, that'd help him out. Oh, is he trying to take that on? I'm not sure. I think he's just tried to do something, hasn't he, there? Yeah. Just create something out of nothing. Great chance here for Dom again. And I think what you'll find he might try to do again is like, see, look at the snooker, maybe. Bring one of the yellows out. He could be aggressive here. If he if he lands on one, the other one will be fairly easy. But yeah, I think you're right. He's looking snooker here. Yep, checking where he wants to leave it. Oh, that's Ooh. not the best shot he's ever played. It certainly isn't. It's a massive chance here. Okay, not the easiest chances, but... Well, Dom's not even developed his two yellows. Yeah, they now both don't go. It's a poor shot, and he knows it. A little bit of a rush of blood to the head there, I think. He's under-hit it, of all things. Danger of that one is he sort of over-hit it, but he actually under-hit it, and yeah, Matt's going to make it. Is he on the red? He is. He is. Horrible, though. Horrible, horrible shot, this, because... It's natural to go straight <laughs> up. <laughs> that face tells you all you want to know. He's bridging above the yellow. Yeah, this isn't this isn't easy. I will be impressed if he pops this and gets on the eight ball. Yeah, this is this needs to be some shot, and you got to feel for Matt Cook. Can he pull one out of the fire? Oh, what a shot! What, what a, a shot! shot, that shot is. Matt. Got to play another good one, but he'd, you know, after that, you'd certainly fancy him for this. Yeah, that's brilliant. Difficult to stress how difficult an opening to the match that Matt Cook has had to knock that one in his serious, serious play. Yeah, and he lovely. makes the eight ball comfortable after that one. Super finish from Matt Cook. Yes, Dom Cooney let him in, but he was left about as horrible as he could be. Dom won the next two frames to go 6 1 up, and we join him at the table in the eighth. Interesting. Mm. Didn't fancy them clearly. So Matt Cook will get another go in the frame. Reds are tough, but they are there in a strange way. I think he can land on the eight ball to the bottom right. I think there's just the room to land on it. And of course, the further away from the ball he is, the tougher the shot is. So does that means that red closest to the eight is going to be his last ball. Maybe a couple of shots before then to play, mind. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I think he wanted just a little less angle here and play this with right hand side and go into him. But yeah, it's a nice shot. Yeah, nice. A little bit unfortunate. 
Should still be okay. He's still on it. I think he can play the double on the eight ball. No, not to beat. He jumped up off that. I think he knew that he'd missed it. He was actually went a lot closer than I think he thought he was going to, but he jumped straight up off his shot. Yeah, the way it's landed might just make it a bit awkward for Dom. Oh, this is a clever shot. He's going to play off the yellow. He's going to yeah. play double. Play the double. Drills it straight in, and now there really is no problems. For seven one. Just. Mm -hmm. Scoreline a lot more one sided than I expected it to be, if I'm honest. And Dom Cooney end it in style. His break's been reliable all night up until that moment. Matt Cook will get at least one more visit to the table. There can be no mistakes from here. Can't help but thinking he's sort of trying to trying to force something here, and you can't blame him. No, <laughs> it's, it's not. been that sort of night for him. I'm not sure what he can force from here, mind. Can you pull out the fire from here? Oh, that would be a little bit spicy. Hmm. Not to be, though. Mind you, it had about the right line there. I think he was tracking. Yeah, I don't think it was mainly miles away. With 13 minutes to go and, and sort of six frames behind us, uh, are you sort of sat in your chair thinking, well, I'm done? It's very you difficult couldn't blame him if he did. No, it's very difficult not to think that, isn't it? Especially with how this game has gone as well. I've, you know, if you'd just been... I don't know, maybe it would feel a bit different if you'd just been kept off the table and you hadn't really had a go. But, you know, the the run that he's had, you can't deny he's he's been... He's not just been beaten, he has been a bit unlucky as well. I'm not saying he's, you know, been so unlucky he should be, he should be level or leading or anything like that, but he should be a bit more in the game than 7-1. The first couple of frames especially were, I mean, a bit, a bit of a joke, really. But credit Dom, he's played well and, you know, you can only 
clean the table that's left in front of you, and he's done that on plenty of occasions. Played well tonight, is Don Cooney. Oh, that's not a good shot. No, it isn't. Well, what a, a daft shot that is. He's got to literally just sc screw this over and just miss the top lip of the uh, left-hand middle pocket as we look at the table to have any chance of, there you go, exactly where he's looking now. <laughs> this isn't an easy shot. This could easily find it in off. Yeah, this is tough now. It shouldn't have been. Shot. Played it lovely. Oh, a little kiss to help it. That'll do. Oh, that will do. And Dom Cooney will get the job done. 8 1 in the final. And he's into the next round of the Ultimate Pool Masters. The Dominator with a dominating couple of results here in the Ultimate Pool Masters. A very solid performance then from Dom Cooney, the group favourite, the ultimate pool professional in the group, and he moves on to the second stage of the competition. Up next for us, next week, week 10 of Ultimate Pool The Masters, David McNamara and Dan Eaton-Lees are the two ultimate pool professionals in the group. Partab Singh and Kevin George complete the lineup. It's all exclusively live on ultimatepool.tv, Wednesday the 7th of September at 6.30. I'll be back for another recap of the show next week. Join you then.